Hi everybody, it's Wanda. I'm sick, but I'm gonna do this for you all because I don't have anything to post tomorrow, which is Friday. I have bronchitis and a sinus infection, and I have doctor's appointment tomorrow afternoon at 2.30, so I wanted to get this done tonight. This is what I accomplished doing a transfer. And I'm gonna show you all how to do this. This came from this book of designs. I bought this from T Dover Publications. You can find them online if you go online and Google. And it has wonderful photographs of designer fashions from the 1900s to 1950. And it just has pages and pages and pages of beautiful costumes and, you know, dress. And I really love this one, this one, this one. Um, from 1900 to 1950. And they're royalty free. And you can use, uh, you can copy up to 10 of them um, to put on your artwork or to make money with or whatever without having to pay royalty for using the images. And it may be that the copyright has even expired now because I've had these things for probably 15 years. Um, on the CD that comes with it, there's a CD that comes with the books. It says that it is good for up to Windows XP. It doesn't even give Windows 2000 and, or Windows 7, 8, or 10, but it did work when I took it in for them to make me the copies. You will need a laser copy, not an inkjet copy. So you cannot use your home inkjet printer to do this. Um, here's another one that I have that I had gotten from Dover. I really, I know that I have one here that, say, that has medieval armor in it and it's fabulous. Um, I think I loaned it to my grandson one time. We'll see if I can find it if he gave it back to me, but it has beautiful Egyptian stuff in it and there's a CD in the back that I can take in to, you can take them to Kinko's, Staples, Office Depot, UPS, whatever place you can get them to do laser copies for you. And you can find these um, at, like I said, at Dover Publications online if you should want to buy one of those books. So I chose this image. I took it to the UPS place and they did not have the ability to mirror the image. Um, but I didn't really care. And this, it didn't matter. There was no writing on this anywhere. If there had been writing, any text of any kind, you would have, you would have to have them to mirror that image, flip it over so that when you lay it down, it's, it's going to show and read the way it needs to read. So this is finished and it has had one coat of matte uh, varnish put on it. I wanted to seal it good, let it sit for about a week, and then I'm going to put a glossy on it just so that it'll match when I varnish the painting. But that's my first one. And I did that as a trial because they were having trouble getting their printer to print in the, the 11 by 17 size that I had asked for, and this was an eight and a half by 11 image, and I had this 12 by 16 canvas, so I used it as a sample. The one I'm going to do I had to pour, actually, a couple days ago, a silver, and this is the one I'm gonna be putting a big image on, and this is the image, just like that one. This is what it looks like after you cut it. What I did was I um, had my image printed out at UPS. I brought it home. I covered it in Mod Podge, the matte Mod Podge, three times, and try to cover it so that it looks kind of white. You don't want to not put enough on there. You want to put quite a bit on there. It gives it sort of a funny plasticky kind of feel and it's flexible. So then, because I didn't want the whole rest of the white to be on top of the silver, I cut it out 
And um, so now it's ready to be glued down, but I'm letting this canvas cure for a few more days before I do that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick out your image. You can put it on a flash drive if you've got a flash. Take it down to wherever, tell them where it's located on the flash drive so they can find it easily and have your color copy made or black and white. You can do it in black and white. And let them take it to the let them take your flash drive to the back, plug it into their computer, and tell them it has to be laser, not inkjet, and what size you want. And they should be able to size it if you want it on 11 by 17 piece of paper. Tell them that, or 11 by 14, or eight and a half by 11, whatever is standard that they can print it onto for the size canvas that you want to transfer it to. So this is going to go. Of course, it'll go like this. Um, onto this canvas and I wanted to do a big one of those because I decided to do this one on the gold okay this image right here is the one that I chose I hope you all can see it, to go on this gold, because I thought red and gold would look beautiful together. So that's how it looks. I covered it with three coats of Mod Podge. I let it dry overnight. You can coat those in one afternoon. Um, I can tell right now that I made boo-boos on this one because I didn't get all the air out. When you glue it down, you're going to put your Mod Podge, if you're doing a whole canvas print, you'd cover the whole canvas in Mod Podge. The way I was doing it, I just put it on the image. And I did this last night, and I was sick when I did it. And I didn't take enough time to get all the air out. So I'm going to have some air pockets, which means that image is going to have holes in it. It will not transfer pretty solid like the other one that I did. It's not going to look as pretty. Hopefully, I can just take some red paint or a marker and mark in, and it won't show that much, but we'll wait and see. So now it's been glued down overnight with Mod Podge. I made sure that I tried to get all to the edge and I had it just like this one and I just laid it down on top of a foam core board that had some freezer paper on it and I just took my Mod Podge and I covered it and I made sure I got it all around the edges really good so the edges would stick down and I took it off of that piece of paper so it wouldn't be glued to it around the edges and laid it on a different area where there was no glue. So I have glued this one down. I used one coat of Mod Podge on this surface that had the three, already three, been sealed with three of them. Three layers of Mod Podge. So now all you do is you water, use some water. You can use a sponge. I just use paper towel. You want to get it wet, let it soak in a little bit, and you're going to peel this paper off. Now, this is not a fast process. <laughs> uh, it takes a while. You can do it in stages, though. You can basically wet it down, start working on it, let it dry out a little bit, see where you see the paper, as long as you still see white residue. Um, I'll insert a picture of it not finished. When I did the little one, I, I did the bottom, I did the top, and I left some in the middle, and it shows, and you can see what that looks like. So what you're going to do is you're going to start peeling this paper off. And it, if it's not soaking in there, it could be that I got Mod Podge on the back side, or it could be that I just don't have my... Paper towel wet enough up against that. I'm not too concerned if there's Mod Podge on there, but you just want to not pull the whole image off right there. I got a little bit starting, I think, that I can work with. So I'm gonna put my fingernail down there and kind of hold on to that if I can. And you will start peeling this paper off. As you peel the paper off, you're going to see your image start to show through. And just put that, 
piece that you peeled off right over to the edge. Now, if you've done three coats of Mod Podge, you can do more. You should be safe to start peeling this paper backing off of it and it not damage your image. This is easy. There's nothing complicated about it. It just is time consuming. It's the only thing that is involved here is your time. So, as you can see, when you start wetting it down, you can start seeing your color and your image start to come through. You just pull this and throw it off to the side. Now, you're going to work this with your fingers until you feel like you don't have any fingerprints left <laughs> in some situations. But depending on how big the image is. Um, and you're going to pull that off. You're going to keep rubbing. Keep pulling off more paper until you have all of this paper completely off of your image. I may just do, you just roll it off to the side there. Just keep wetting your paper and it's easy, pretty much easy to get that first layer. This was, I asked him what weight paper this was. It was a 20 pound paper. So the thinner the copy paper, the easier this would be to do, actually. Just keep rubbing until you get all the paper off. And like I said, you can do this in three or four different, I mean, you don't have to do it all in one setting. You can do it, get part of it done, come back to it the next day and come back to it the next day just in your spare time and just keep working it because it'll dry back out and you can just peel off some more. So I just want to make sure. I'll come up to 12 minutes on this video. So I'm going to keep going for a couple minutes. She had her lipstick, her gloves, and her compact mirror in her hand. She had her hair upswept in a pretty do. I like this image. So I'm gonna wet it all so hopefully you all can see some of it. She had on a beautiful red evening gown. You can actually use, I've used the paper towel too to also just kind of roll it off like that. Just keep, it makes it a little easier than doing it with your fingers all the way. I have to remember now not to drink out of this <laughs> bottle of drinking water. But you just want to get it wet. You don't want it too soppy wet, but you do want it damp enough that it'll soak into that paper and get it wet pretty fast. And then you just keep working it until you get the entire image exposed. And then whether you actually, um, you could go over it with Mod Podge to seal it if you wanted to. Instead of using a varnish, I just had Liquitex matte varnish, so that's what I used, but um, you can seal it with Mod Podge, that's fine. Um, I just didn't want them to use it because to me that's just glue. Um, so I would rather use the Liquitex. But you could do family pictures on your background. You could, you know, I love Snapchat and all the cute effects that they have that I see kids, you know, young people, you especially use them with Snapchat, so. If one of your kids does a cute Snapchat, you can save that on your phone. You can take it um, to Walgreens probably and have them download it and print it for you or to um, one of the places like Office Depot or whatever. And you could just make a collage of your kids, have them help you to assemble a collage. They'd probably do it for you. Um, you might even be able to upload them to Walgreens, make your own collage, 
have them then go in and print it out for you, at, you know, with a laser copier and just go in and pick it up. I think these copies were 69 cents a piece and they were 11 by 17, so that's big. Um, so it's not expensive to do it this way. Not expensive at all. You can see where it's all starting to roll up. But this is such a cool way, and especially if you wanted to do like a family thing. I think it would be so cute. I may do some. Um, I think we have a couple of birthdays coming up for the great-grandchildren, and I know that um, my great-granddaughter, Rayleigh, just had her birthday, and there's pictures of her that I can get to on Facebook. So I may surprise them with something like this um, for their bedrooms with pictures of each of the kids having their birthday cake or whatever, would be cute. It'd be something they could keep for a long time too. So, I hope you understand. If you have any questions, post the questions. I'll try to get them answered over the next few days. Um, I'll try to, I'll post this video on Friday. Um, and then I'll be working in the basement on Saturday and hopefully I'll feel like tomorrow night on Friday getting another painting done to post on Saturday, but if not, I'll get some done over the weekend, I'm sure, and I'll get back into getting things done, getting back on, getting mine posted every day. So, um, thank you so much for watching. If you're a new subscriber, I invite you to come back and watch me do some pours or look at my older uh, videos that I've done of pours or recent videos or whatever. If you see something that strikes your fancy, go have a look at it. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful night and you're healthy. Because if we have our health, we've got the world by the tail. So, thanks again. Have a good night.